You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Do you know what? It's not just your breath that you can smell garlic on. I didn't know that. No, it's true. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Always in farts. Yeah. So, Mike, what have you got for us today in your buzz? Well, I've actually gone a bit historical oh, and found out exactly how gay pharaohs were. Oh, very gay, I'm expecting. Or not at all. Or not at all. Stay tuned to find out. Oh, wow. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at The Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, thecud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing The Cud and hit subscribe. And as names of people whiz along the bottom of the screen, we get ready for this week's showbiz and Lee. <laughs> We've got some more Britney news. Oh, that wasn't a good one even for me. That was... <laughs> that was Sorry, that. You just made that noise and said that wasn't good for me. Even for me. Wasn't that wasn't for a good anybody. one, even for me. No, nobody Normally I can do quite a good Britney. You really can't. I can. You really yeah. cannot. No, I've not got it You today. sound like a cat that's in pain. Well, so does she. That's, no, that's no she sounds whole... like a singer. No, she doesn't. You, sound... you know, it's like... Mid July, and a cat sat it. Yeah. See, that's what it sounds like. That's, oh, anyway, we've had this row before. Yeah, I'm not going, on, I'm not treading old ground. Not pussy doing on it. heat. Pussy on heat. So, she has been, so obviously, she, she's had the conservatorship scrapped. She's now her own woman. She can do what she wants to. So now she's coming out with, with details about what's happened. Okay. Um, and um, so, yeah, she's kind of like, what she's basically saying is, is that she's refusing to record any new music at the moment as, as a, as a, as a, F you to her family members. Okay. To set, kind of like saying, you kept me in this for 14 years. Right. And if you think I'm going to make you any more money, you can think again. Okay. So she's refusing to do new music. Although she's, so she's, we've got a picture of Britney now. She loves a bit of Instagram posting. She does. People were slightly worried because she was, she was, she's posted quite a number of quite revealing photographs mm -hmm. of her in the nudie. Um, you know, covering up areas, but pretty much naked. Okay. Um, so people were questioning whether or not... Did you just fart? I burped. <laughs> you leant over... You... <laughs> I just did I just did it quite subtly when I wasn't on camera. How rude. So I didn't have to cut it. You literally leant to one side like that, as yes. if you were fart... No, because if it was fart, I said, oh, it's too, it's too stiff to that, and you're greedy. Yeah, the lights would have just shattered, and they <laughs> would have just keeled over. Anywho... <laughs> So anyway, so so Britney so, naked. <laughs> so people, so people have been kind of been a little bit concerned. Okay. About, but it's whether or not she's kind of like had this for fourteen years, where she's not been able to do her own social media. She's a forty-year-old woman, for goodness' sake. She can do what she wants. Uh -huh. um, this is a picture of Britney with her very, very hot boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend, um, I believe. Is it ex? Yes, because he's run away with me. Oh, he hasn't. In though, has my he? mind. So they're engaged. He's called Sam. He was a dancer in one of her videos, featured as one of the hunks in one of her videos a couple of years ago, slumber party. I'm going to call him a chair because she wants to sit on his face. Oh, just on him. I don't oh, just like... on him? There's different parts of his okay. body that I would sit on. Right. Well, so what she's saying... is Jay's, because I could lie across it. Okay. Should we, should we focus back on Britney? We can, we can try. So... But you've just shown me a picture of a very handsome man. He is very, very hot. Small he is very so hot. I'm going to have a problem. Um, what she's saying is that... that, that <sighs> you're going to bring it back. Do you, want, do you want a tissue and some lotion in a couple of minutes, Mike? No, I'll be fine. You'll be fine. You, you, you talk, talk, you talk okay, to yourself. Talk away. So what she's saying is, is that, um, that they, they set her up to fail. So she was like saying that, she, that they wasted so much time embarrassing her and humiliating her that it seems odd to me why I don't even do my own music anymore. They, they, she was like saying that, they, that you know, she, constantly she was asking, can I do some new music? Can I do remixes of my own music? Can I do my own kind of stuff? And they'll say, no, 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 you can't do it. Um, and she doesn't understand how network television shows were like playing all her music, doing remixes, and the person who actually makes the music oh. has been told no. Um, this is going to be one of those things that keeps going and going and going yeah. because she's got beef with all of her family. Yeah, yeah. Um, her I, sister. To be fair, well, quite yeah. rightly. Yeah, she's she's not happy with her sister Jamie Lynn at the moment. No, nope. saying that Jamie Lynn should have stuck up for her and has used that as her advantage. I do like Brittany. Yeah, I just hope that she's okay. Sure, she'll be fair. So she'll she's going to be reliving her life now because for the past what 
14, 15 mm. years. She wasn't able to be her own person. She can do what the hell she wants, so she'll have all this freedom now. So she's going to do some weird shit. Yeah. And that's fine. As long as she's keeping herself mentally safe. She's looking matters. after herself. She's she's yeah. she's getting the support that she needs. Mm. Do you remember back in the day, sort of like mid early to mid nineties, when mm. Baywatch was on television? Yes, you do, Mike. You were in your like mid twenties then. Um, Remembering that you've got a good ten years. Of <laughs> timeless. Um, <laughs> do no, you... Old isn't timeless. Just do... You can't count past that number. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee? I think it was just called Tommy Lee. I don't think he had a surname. I want to say Tommy Lee Jones, but that's not him. That's, no, that's an old actor. But Tom, so Motley Crue drummer, Tommy Lee, they uh -huh. were a thing. And they were like in all the sort of celebrity gossip magazines, getting yeah. up to all sorts of things. They were probably one of the first couples that kind of fell into that sex tape thing where they when did a sex say tape. fell... Well, I, I think somebody sold it before they could sell it. So yeah. that was the main issue. I, I think that's the problem. Um, the fact that they made a sex tape and someone sold it and they got none of it. Yeah, they got none of it. So it's come to... You know, like, I kind of think, well, that was only like five years ago. No. no. It was like 20 years ago and, and more. But they're making um, a TV series, Pam and Tommy. Oh. The TV series, because that's their names. Um, and um, <laughs> And it's all about... Obviously, their life, the sex tape. We've got a picture here. <laughs> That's it. Those two things. The life and the their sex tape. Their life and their sex tape. <laughs> and the kind of like the fame and stuff. So playing Pamela Anderson uh -huh. is Lily James, who we've got a picture of her here, who is a massive, massive sort of departure because she's used to playing sort of like ladies in Downton she, Abbey. I say she was the lady, in, but um, as Lady Rose in Downton Abbey, I believe yes, she was. Yes, yes. Um, she wasn't exactly well-mannered. No, but she... She was a bit she, of a rebel. She didn't have her nangs out all the time, like like... Pamela had nangs. Um, she was also <laughs> she was also in Cinderella, so very used to covering up. The sort of transformation into Pamela Anderson is like absolutely amazing. You okay. really so we've got a picture here of the real Pamela uh -huh. next to um, Lily playing Pamela. Now okay. I wouldn't know if if they kind of like said I would say oh there's two pictures of Pamela Anderson there. I don't think she's gone to the degree of having fake boobies done. There's a very definite line with those boobies. I mean, Pamela's boobies are very so. Uh, uh, like, Pam, the real Pamela is on the left. Uh huh. The Lily James playing Pamela is on the right, putting a hand up like yeah, that. Yeah. So Pamela's breasticles uh -huh. are quite clearly the Mitchell brothers, just having a rest inside a top. Right. Yeah. Whereas the other ones, I think they've just kind of sellotaped them together. I don't know about breasts. It's not my speciality. Some, like some fishing wire around to give them that. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. might have had a bit of work done. She might have had a bit of a. You, you, an yeah. You never spot. know. You never know. But Pamela Anderson isn't happy. She's branded it a cheap knockoff. <laughs> she's, she, <laughs> she's never heard I of the actors so. that play her. Doesn't care to know them. Thinks it's all a pile of big poop. Um, okay. And it's not probably because she's not making any money out of it. They're kind of. Um, well. If, if it's her story, they should make some money out of it. Mm, don't know. Does it, we... The Pamela Anderson story. Well, it's not called the Pamela Anderson, it's just called Pam and Tommy. Which Pam and Tommy? It could be any Pam and Tommy. <laughs> could be Pam S. <laughs> Pam S and Tommy Cooper. <laughs> Pam S and Tommy Cooper. That, that's a current reference for viewers out there. <laughs> Google so, that. Do you need to explain who Pam S and Tommy Cooper are? Well, Pam S was, 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 a, was a poet. Is a poet because I think she's still with us. She's not died yet. Um, she, <laughs> yet. she. Was That's she, next week's episode, everybody. Was she in the gallery? Was she like West Country? Was she? She's, war, yes, war. From down south. Yes. Tommy Cooper just like that was was um, a comedian, magician type person. Wore a fez and went just like that, just like that. He is dead, uh, but it's not their story. It's okay. It's, yeah, we've got we've got a picture. I don't know if we can bring the picture back up of the two of the real. Pam and Tommy uh -huh. and the fake Pam and Tommy. Which one do you think is the real one and which one do you think is the, the actors the playing them? So, which one do you think is which? So, the one in colour are the real. You are. Look at that. Look at what she's doing to his nipple. Biting the nip ring. Really, really biting it. So, that is now released now. We can't get it in the, in the UK at the moment. You can only watch it if you're in the US on Hulu whatever channel, whatever streaming service that is. Um, it's called Hulu. It's called Hulu. Yeah. Whatever channel it is called Hulu. It's called Hulu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's just yeah. Hulu. 
Um, so if that if if that is your floats your boat, didn't they have sex on the boat? I think they had sex pretty much everywhere. Not in the sex tape, was it? Not on a boat, on a camcorder. It was on a cam. Yeah. <laughs> they they were in some sort of like like cruise ship, weren't they? Not a not a not like a P and O ferry. <laughs> More like um. <laughs> Sorry, a cruise ship P and O ferry. That's the only one I've been on. That's the only thing things. I can just like like a <laughs> on a booze cruise. To, to Normandy or wherever it is that they, they stop off at. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Is a Normandy by the sea? Ship. I don't know. A cruise ship like a P&O ferry. P&O cruise ship. All the sausage you can eat. I need to stop now. That's the end of this week's showbiz news. Thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know that you like to go on a ship to eat sausage. It's the only place I ever eat it. <laughs> Stay... <laughs> Stick with us because next is Mike and the Buzz. Why do you lie? <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. And now let's have Mike lube up his middle finger and insert it and just touch the tip of our joy buttons in the buzz. <laughs> So at the start of the show, I talked about how LGBTQI the pharaohs were. You did, didn't you? You teased it. Yeah, I did. I teased it a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, how, how gay do you think the ancient Egyptians were? How long have you got? Uh, about 10 Wigs, minutes. eyeliner, gold jewellery, hello. Like, <laughs> I think they probably, well, the Greeks, mm. they were constantly at. Greeks at, loved a little bit of bum fun. Bum fun, yeah. Right. But Romans, same sort of era, not so much. Not so much. Although the Romans did, <laughs> the Romans did see it as the high, highest form of masculinity. Yeah, because yeah, it's the bottoming's difficult. <laughs> so I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't care what people say. I'm thinking. Show me a man that can Egypt... bottom. I can show you a man that can give birth. I've read. I've read um, <laughs> many a novel oh, by George yeah. Clancy about the Egyptians. <laughs> So I have a bit of an expert. Okay. Um, and they used to do a lot of eunuching, didn't they? Eunuching. <laughs> eunuching. So what when are you they doing this weekend? Are you doing the washing? <laughs> no, I'm going to be doing some eunuching. <laughs> oh, eunuching on a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I know. It's been a busy week. So this chick, chick, chick. When they used to have week. like a harem of, of, of wives, uh -huh. um, the, the, gen the, the soldiers that looked after them, guarded them, would be... Um, uh, and either said euthanized then, castrated. Um, uh, castrated, eunuched, so that no, they castrated. They become a eunuch. Yeah, so that they obviously couldn't. Actually, no, no. Eunuch is different. Is it? Castration is removing the testicles. Is evolved. Sure eun eunuch, eunuch is, is both. Giving you a smooth area like a Kendall. Yes, yes. Anyway, so what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Whether the Egyptians yeah. like it? Yeah. Um, so evidence has come about that the um, Egyptian culture had lots and lots of LGBTQI references. Yeah. To the fact that even some of their, their deities and their big deities, like the main ones like Seth, yeah, was known to have a wife and husbands. Mm. Yeah. Um and, and it wasn't that they were having sex with like mere mortals in the myths, that they were having sex with other deities. Well. So they were all at it. It was just a free for all of love. Yes. Um they did consider <laughs> the downside. A little bit of a downside. Um, there was a little bit of a slur attached at the end because any of these deities that had sex with other men or other women um, then didn't produce any children. Okay. Which was a bit of a problem in ancient Egypt because it was all about fertility and life. Yes. Yeah, so there's a bit of a snub in there. Well, if they were deities, you think they'd be able to create their own. Like, poof, and there would be a, <laughs> there would be a baby. Poof, there you are. Yeah, yeah. poof. Because what did... Um, that's what um, <laughs> that's what God did, isn't it? <laughs> puffed Jesus. <laughs> he puffed Jesus. Well, that's Christianity for you. God came down and puffed Jesus. <laughs> you mean he came down to a, a virgin and went, you're carrying my child, you are? Yeah. A little bit non-consensual. I thought that through. But I'm sure I've read, obviously, in another book, 
of the Tom Clancy. Um, Who is Tom Clancy? He's, 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 he's a famous author. He's doing big, big, big blockbuster books about, like, ancient times. Like stories. Like Egyptians. Like stories or facts. Yeah, no, fiction, not facts. Uh, not based on fact-ish. <laughs> the fact um, was a place called Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Um, very interesting. Because the thing is, you wouldn't really want to be um, a lover of a, of, a, of a pharaoh because when they die, mm. you get put in the tomb with them, don't you? Alive. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants a dusty old cock. Mm, to be fair, you... Mm, yeah. I will have to ask your partner. Anyway, um, but this comes on the back of recently that they discovered another pharaoh. Another one? Another one. Yes, this one was covered in chocolate and small nuts. Pharaoh Rocher. I apologise to all the viewers for that. It won't happen again. But we'll move on now. Mexican food. Do you like Mexican food? Um, it's a little too spicy for me. Do you, does it get you a bit hot and sweaty? It does. It has it, it has an, an after effect a few hours later, possibly the day after. So a bizarre thing that um, a burrito. A burrito. A burrito. That's like the big crisp that they fill with. Um, mince and... No, no, that's a taco. It's a taco. A burrito is like a wrap. Okay, yes. yeah. Yeah. So you get a wrap. A wrap. It's, it's got meat and, and rice. Yeah, and, and you... Nom, 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 nom. Like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. a wrap. Mm. Yeah, not a taco. No. Wrap. Wrap, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it turns out that burritos were actually invented in 2011 by Kim Jong-un II, according to North Korea. Look there at the action some, on that one. There we have some North Koreans. <laughs> He's had them before, has not he? <laughs> <laughs> He's used to a burrito. Ooh. Yes, well. Mm. So, so Kim Jong Un has told people that he invented the burrito, is he? Yes, pretty much. Um, the Korean government uh, mouthpieces claim that he created the burritos in 2011, and their sales are booming. Oh, well done him. Yes. So, considering the fact I can remember having burritos in the late 90s. They've been around hundreds and hundreds of years, and I suppose you can't you can't check it because they're not allowed on the internet. No, I, you're not allowed to check it. And if he says I created the burrito, you kind of got to go. Then he yes, created did. the burrito. Mm. Yes, you did, King John. Mm. The burrito, a very North you create Korean. The bowl cut, because that's working for you. He doesn't have a bowl cut though, does he? Has that weird like hairdo. Didn't Both didn't he have back. the bowl cut? Am I thinking of the wrong dictator? King John Un with the with the bowl cut. No, he's got, he's got, he's got, Has he brushed it back now? He's always had the bush back. Who had the bowl cut? I don't know. I don't Are know. Are you thinking about Hitler? No. <laughs> no, I thought King John Hung had like a like a centre parting and like a bowl cut. Has he had a makeover? Mm, maybe done a long time ago, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, is there another one? Is there, is there another weird... Is there another really... Oh. North Korean dictator? Yeah. No, it's not surprisingly. They, they tend to only have one at a time. OK. Stops the fighting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting news about Mexican food that it's actually invented in North Korea about 11 years ago. Well done. Well done, him. Um, and if you invent sort of like Mexican food or Indian food and want to claim it as your own, you can always share it with us on our social media. It's at the Kud TV. And that brings us to our story of the week. Have you ever used an egg in an un unusual way? No. No. Um, well, I mean, there was that time I pretended to be chick, chick, chicken. Lay a little egg for me. Okay. What did you do? Just took a chicken. Just took a chicken up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's niche. That's <laughs> good. I want to do the whole life cycle, but I'm very pressed on time. <laughs> I've not got time to do the egg. Just bring me the chicken and a lot of lube. <laughs> or did you go in dry? <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> Get them giblets out of me, Marjorie. <laughs> Which came Marjorie. first, the chicken or the egg? Me. <laughs> So no, no, I, scr I, I, the, I only eat eggs scrambled uh -huh. or in an omelette. Okay. Or mixed in a cake, obviously. Okay. I don't, don't like boiled, don't like fried. What about poached? Don't like that. I love a little poached egg. No, I don't like the yucky, yolky stuff. Oh, I love a snotty egg. No. Oh, yeah, when it it's just cooked. No. 
A little bit phlegmy on top. No. Mm. Once, my grandma made... <laughs> Going, but do, do, do. how much time have we got? Have we got time for a story? Shall we all sit down? Right, she boiled an egg, right, to go on a picnic, and when she um, cracked oh, it open yeah. and cut it in half, there was a chick embryo inside. Uh, and that's always put me off. So, since they've been X graying eggs, X graying eggs, so they're, um, since the 80s, that tells me how long ago that was. It was kind of that time, yeah. I was very young. I wasn't allowed eggs because it was so small because of the salmonella. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so what were we talking about with eggs? So, yes, this is a, a story about a lady who's cracked open an egg in a frying pan, going to fry herself a lovely little egg, and screamed. Oh, was When it some... came out, it was pink. Oh, uh, ooh. Was it blood? <laughs> was it blood? Was it chicken blood? Chicken blood. There it is. Oh, OK. So it's the white of the... Well, the, the, the red the, of, the, yolk, of the egg. The, no, the, no, the, 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 the yolk is yellow. The albumin. Is that what's in eggs, albumin? Is that not where um, King Arthur went to live? Oh, it's albumin, sorry. Albumin, albumin. Albumin. What's the yolk? That, the uh, yolk the is the yellow bit. bit. Yeah, the, that's the, that's the, the white that is... becomes the chicken. Yeah. And the white is all the lovely... I think that in, the, in, the, in the white bit, that's albumin. Because some... I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyway, she, she broke she broke it into the thing and it was red. Is that it then? According to the... Yeah, so, <laughs> apparently if it was cloudy, it would mean it was very, very fresh. A pink or pearly egg indicates that it's got bacteria in it. The word here is spoilage. Spoilage. I'm not a fan of the word spoilage. Spoilage. So it, it was an off egg. Yeah. Um, pretty much, if you ever set, use a pink egg, just throw it away. It's got bacteria in it. You don't want it. Ooh. It's bad for you. Did she recover? Was she okay? Yeah, she was fine. She screamed and screamed it. it in the bin, and that was yeah. it. Wow. Wow story. Stick around, because coming up next, we have our game of the week. <laughs> You're watching Two in the Cod. Now it's time to play our new game of Step Back in Time. Not the Kylie song, but kind of similar because we're talking about things from the past. So, Mr. Benny and Rowe, would you like to, to exit stage left and take your position? Not with your hands on your ankles, the sitting up position. Okay, well, sit on a d as well as we know. Game of the Week. So, Mike is going to choose from a selection of topics all about yesteryear and answer the questions. Are you ready, Mike? Ooh, this is exciting, isn't it? Mmm. Ooh. Though I feel a little bit queasy right now. So, Mike, are you ready? I am. So, your first question about the 80s. Uh-huh. What was watched by an estimated 400 million television viewers across 60 countries on 13th of July, 1985? Would that be the royal wedding of Charles and Diana? It would not be. Oh, was it Fergie? No, it would. Nothing to do with marriage. Nothing to do with royals. Nothing to do with royals. Um, was it... See, I was going to say it was my second birthday, but that, was, that would have been in the February. Um... The Super Bowl. No. Band-Aid. Well, I mean, you've had like 14 chances there. I don't know whether to give it you or not. Because I got it right in the end. It, in the end, you got it right. Right, okay. So it, was, right. it was Live Aid. I said Band-Aid anyway, so it's still wrong. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing, though. Okay, what decade would you, <laughs> what decade would you like next? I'd like to go to a simpler time, so we'll go for the 60s. The 60s. Okay. In 1996. No, it wasn't. Because it's the 60s. In 1967, Dr. Christian Bonnard made medical history when he performed the first successful human transplant of which organ? The heart. You are right. I know. That's your first right one. Yeah, it is. Mm. Okay. Where are you going this time? I'm going to stay in the 60s. Going to stay in the 60s. It, it, Welcome it, it, to the 60s. Feeling that way. Ooh. Um, we've had that one. 
Which artist, often remembered for his soup can, said, in the future... Andy Warhol. Oh. <laughs> yes, you were right. Yeah. Are you staying 60s or are you going more... I'll go 70s. 70s, let's, let's okay. Get some, let's get some flares on. Who first won the Wimbledon Men's Singles Championship in 1976 and went on to win the title four more times? Boris Becker. Is that your final answer? It isn't my final answer. It isn't. It's um, Boris Becker was 90s or 80s. I don't know. I only know him and Tim Henman. It was Bjorn Borg. Oh. He, made, he makes a nice pant, doesn't he now? He makes a nice pant for the gentleman. Um oh. Was he not? I thought he was in Abba Beyond Borg. No, that was Beyond Ulverston. Okay. Which TV duo had a street contact called Huggy Bear? What? Which TV duo had a street contact called Huggy Bear? Anton Deck. That's just silly, isn't it? It's. It was Starsky and Hutch. Okay. He was like their informant. Was it really? Don't know. Informant. Informer, you. <laughs> informant. <laughs> I told the police where I had been and got away with it too. Dicky boom boom down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what decade are we going for next? Nineties. Nineties. Okay. What was the more common name for the unpopular community charge introduced into Britain? Poll tax. In it was indeed. Well done. Yes. Um, okay. Staying in the 90s. Staying in the 90s. Though. Staying in the 90s. Okay. Which children's author died in November... Roald 19 Dahl. Yeah. Were you a big Roald Dahl fan? Yes, I was. Mm. Loved the twits. Ended up working with one, didn't I, Lee? You did? I, well, I always thought of you as more as a Matilda. Are we, are we staying in the 90s? What, eating cake? Yeah, let's stay in the 90s for a bit. Stay in the 90s? Okay. Yeah. Which non-royals famously sat on thrones at their wedding in 1999? Beckhams. Hmm? Beckhams. Victoria mm -hmm. and David mm -hmm. Beckham. If it was being pedantic, I would ask for their surname, you know, their right surnames. David Beckham, yes. What at was the big... time, uh, at the time they sat on the thrones, it was after their nuptials. Oh. So at that point, she would have been Mrs. Beckham. So okay, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. The answer was Victoria Beckham and Victoria uh, <laughs> uh, Victoria Adams, which was a, a maiden name. Yeah, but ooh, that's a very old-fashioned statement, isn't it? Maiden <laughs> name, <laughs> maiden name. Ooh. Um, right, where are we staying? Where are we going? We're, we're going to the eighties. We're going to the eighties. Yes era of Wham. Roger Moore and which other actor portrayed the character of James Bond during the 1980s? Sean Connery. No. It was Timothy Dalton. Oh, I don't know who that is. He was like a very dull Bond. Hmm. Staying in the 80s or are you going in? Yeah, let's stay in the 80s for a bit. Um, who was the first unseen... <laughs> Who was the first <laughs> unseeded player to win <laughs> the men's singles at Wimbledon? She just asked me who was the first person to be felched at Wimbledon. <laughs> who was the first player to be felched at Wimbledon? Live on air. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trick question. No one's done it live on air. It's all pre-recorded. <laughs> um, that one he said before, Boris Becker. It was in day. Yay! He had a nice, he had a nice, he had like a beard and curly hair. Are you having a moment? Blonde. Are you having a moment there? No, well, I kind of like thinking, mm. do you know what he looked a little bit like? The dad off Ulysses. The cartoon. God, that's niche. It's very, it's got a cult following that cartoon. Ulysses, Ulysses, da, 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 the galaxy, he say it's about space. Okay, what, what, um, decade are you going, <laughs> what decade are you going for now? 60s? 60s. Who delivered the I Have a Dream speech from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963? Martin Luther King Jr. You got it right. Um, still 60s? Yeah, stay in the 60s. 
Which culinary crusader refused to wear an apron on her TV <laughs> cookery show, claiming Bloody that... Braddock. Okay, you got it right. Cooking is a cleanly art, not a grubby chore. And she Fanny used, Craddock. She used to just hate Sarah. You could see it in her face. And Sarah will bring this over for me now, won't you, Sarah? Come on, quickly. Thank you. Oh. Was, it, was it Johnny who she was? Johnny Husband, to? yes. Mm. They're going. And Johnny's brought a lovely wine that you'll find in the booklet. Thank you for it. used to like uh, smoke over what she was making, mm. didn't she? Like flick fag ash into it. But it used to be, anything you need to see is always in the booklet. Find the booklet, get the booklet, buy the booklet. It's like, the booklet. Okay, it's in the booklet. You want to watch it now, makes no sense. No recipes anywhere, because it's all in the booklet. Mm. Okay. Um, where are we going next? We're in the 70s. I'm not, I'm not spending much time in the 70s. What was the name of the first single released by Dire Straits? Oh, they were thrilling. This is shit, this is. No. I don't know. Sultans of Swing. Oh, okay. The Sultans of Swing. I don't know why, but every time I hear... I've heard that phrase before, but as soon as I get I get... Uh, when the rainbow rhythm starts to play... Doobie-doo... In my head, but I don't know why. Okay. What was the cause of the 1970s... <laughs> What? Did the pick you? Or we just decided that I'm doing the 70s again. Do you really? want to stay in the 70s? I suppose I'll have to now. You should do. What was the cause of the 1977 British street parties? Oh, that's easy. So uh, let's have a street party then, innit? Um, that would be the Jubilee of Diamondness. Or Silver. No, it's Silver Jubilee. This Queen Silver Jubilee. Yeah, do you know, they invent, so they invent a food for her like the so the last food that was invented was coronation chicken for her coronation for her coronation yeah. mm, and they're asking somebody to invent something now for her millionth one who called for an international ban on landmines just seven months before her death in 1997 princess diana yeah not her royal highness princess diana no just princess diana yes because she had her hrh stolen off her okay. I think of any other do we, do any other royals that have had the HRH stripped from them? I can't think of any. I can't either. Hmm. Anybody fancy going to Pizza Express later? No? No. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And I do believe that's the end of the um of the quiz. So it's not exactly a quiz. It's a game of the week. You know, we're not in a pub going, oh, what's oh, your funny exactly. team name? Oh, I've called mine Brenda's. <laughs> Sorry, pedantic. Uh, okay. I think we've all learned something there. Stay with us because after this break, it's time to get our science on with Mike and that science that is. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time to go over to the segment that I call an abomination, but Mike calls that science that is. That science, that is. Sometimes people stop me in the street and say, Mike, how do you keep your skin looking so young and youthful? They do, Mike, Mike, Mike. They do, Mike, Mike. And they say, so do you use maybe the centre of a, a young baby gibbon? And I say, no, I don't. I, I didn't hear, I didn't understand a word of what you said then. Something <laughs> about a baby gibbon. The placenta of a gibbon, yes. Placenta of gibbon? Yes, the answer is no, I don't. That's yes. my cologne. I don't even use mash swede. Oh. Yes. Um... However, I, what I am going to share with you is some of the chemistry behind the beauty industry. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't yes. involve foreskins? Sorry? Does it involve foreskins by any chance? You can pop it on your foreskin if you wish. <laughs> very, okay. very baggy from what I've heard <laughs> on the toilet walls. Um, so the okay. fir first thing is, you should, do you have a pestle and mortar? I do have a pestle and mortar. Lovely. So you should have a white tablet. I do. A capsule thing. I do. Some greeny leavy things. I do. Okay. Would you like to guess what these are? Um, one is a suppository. No, it's not. No. You do not want to put this up your backside. The uh, the white one mm -hmm. is an Alka-Seltzer. Oof, bit of, bit of indigest. And um, that looks like Salad Fingers is fingers. Okay. So Alka-Seltzer is aspirin, and so it would not be used for um, heartburn or indigestion. And it's a tiny little white tablet. All right. 
Right. So what we have here is we have a vitamin E tablet. Vitamin E. The vitamin E is good for the skin. And we also have collagen. Ooh. Oh, I need some of that. You need some. I've only given you one collagen capsule because I'm concerned you might consume lots of it. <gasps> well, I become too young. It's not magic, it's collagen. Okay. Um, so first thing you need to do is crush up your vitamin E tablet. Which was that again? It's a little white tablet. Not that, I do, not that I'm so, not, lo you know, not listening. You know, the word <laughs> tablet I used gives you a clue it might be the tablet. Okay, so I popped it in my pestle. Right, and just give it a crush. Which is the pestle and which is the mortar? I think the mortar is the container and the pestle is the... I, I think one of them's called one and one's called the other. Oh, that crushed lovely, Mike. Ooh, doesn't it? So make sure it's nicely fi finely ground. Lovely. Once you've done that, you need to pop in your collagen out of the capsule. Or do you have to break that in half? You do have to break it. But the good news is, it's pre-ground. What is collagen made from? Collagen. Yeah, but where'd you get it from? Um, from collagen. Um, it's a natural fat. So it's, a li it's lipoid, I believe the okay. technical term is. Okay. And now once you've got those two, those two are our main ingredients. Okay. Okay. Now if we were making a, a, a mass produced one, we'd be using agua. Agua. Water. Um, maybe some alcohol, some paraffin. Okay. But we're going to go the whole natural route, which is very expensive. Natural is better though. Na it's better, worse, same. Very expensive, which is why the beauty industry doesn't use it. We're going to use lots of aloe vera. Aloe vera. Okay. Why is aloe vera? Well, you can, you can buy aloe vera plants everywhere. You that's can what... indeed, but they don't produce a lot of the actual stuff you need. Do they not? So if you break, it, break your aloe vera leaf open, you'll be left with a little clear, white, liquidy, gooey thing. Hello, Herbert Cumberdale. Have you seen my spoon? Sorry. Musky spoon. Right, what am I doing? Sorry. You're trying to do a Salad Fingers impression, I believe. Which is, Hugh Cumberdale, what is it you are saying with your mouth words? He doesn't talk like that. Sounds more like that than yours. Anyway, so once you've ripped the bottom off your, your aloe vera plant leaf. The bottom off it? Yeah. Okay. Because you you would officially need to peel it, but it's very difficult to Ooh, peel. Oh, there's a lot of, lot of gunky stuff coming out of it. Yeah, that's the sap. So what you want to do is hold it and squeeze it. And you kind of want to milk it. Ooh. Gently. Gently milk it. Squeeze it. Squeeze oh, look it. at that big blob. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's a little bit. It's a little bit like the start of sexy time, isn't it? It's a little pre-cummy. Because it, it does oh, that it whole thing where it, it doesn't let go. It doesn't let go. So, yeah. So, you just want to milk your aloe vera. It's not, aloe vera is very good for, like, if you get sunburn, isn't it? It is very good. It's got lots and lots of things in it which are very good for you. Can you eat aloe vera? You shouldn't eat aloe vera. Why? Um, because... Don't try it. <laughs> there are two types of aloe vera plant. One which is edible mm -hmm. and one which is not. The one which is not edible comes with lots and lots and lots of the lovely stuff that we need to make so like gels and things. And the other one doesn't and tastes foul. Because people do aloe vera cleanses. They do, but that's a very special Oh, it keeps breaking. So you're being too rough then. But I have to, to get the juice out. Okay, so you need to, you need to break it gently and then milk it slowly. Oh, okay. And this is, this is the expensive bit of aloe vera. So the plant is cheap, but the extraction takes a while. Do you, did you, did you, do you have this plant at home? Is this where you're... I, I have, I have pulled these leaves off my plant today, yes. Oh. And because it's winter, they're a little bit limp because you don't water um, succulents in the cold weather. Wait. Oh, it spurted all over me! <laughs> it's not the first time you've said that, <laughs> <laughs> Today. Oh, and I've got to get some out the top. Oh, that just mushed. Mushed. So can I use all my aloe vera? So leaves? you need you need a good three leaves, really. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like oh, squishing it, and then mm -hmm. it's just disintegrating. 
I think you might be being a bit rough then. So once you've got your lovely, it is very much like prequel, I'm sorry. Once you've got your aloe vera in there, you just need to mix that with your, your other ingredients. Oh. oh, I'm making a really horrible mess. And this is the only science thing I've ever been interested in. <laughs> <laughs> so the times is like, going, I want fire. Don't want to do the fire one. <laughs> times to do things for crafty queens. Not interested. We make spunk. We make poo. Just want to know about the beauty ones. And then once you've done that, you should have quite a thick paste. Mm, yeah. Do you have a paste? No. Are you mixing it? Yeah. I didn't get a lot of aloe vera jism out. Did you not? No. You kept... got some of the thicker leaves as well. Yeah, it just they kept just kept breaking. So just to just to reiterate for people at home, you take the bottom off. Yeah? Yeah. And then you go along the wrong side so you break it. And then you turn it around and then you milk it. Yeah, but I was doing that and it was just shredding. Well, just look at that pile of gunk I've got. But anyway, once you've mixed it well, you should have quite a thick white paste. I'll mix it with um, some of the slime I've got on the table. Okay. Maybe if, maybe if I've left my water over there, you could use a little bit of water to thin it out. Oh, I've done it again, Mike. I've added too much liquid. Well, you're going to have a very thin beauty serum then. It does look like a load. It does, yeah. Um, and then what you do is once you've got your, your paste, yeah, you can rub it on your skin and give it a little bit of a massage. I'm quite enjoying doing this. Why am I not surprised? Because <laughs> you're a child. But yeah, so you pop, pop, I'm, I'm doing the back of my hand. Well, That's where age shows the most though, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I would Don't probably do a test this on my, my scrotum hands. because if you can get the wrinkles out of one of them, <laughs> it'll work on anywhere. But yeah. Oh, lovely young skin. Oh, look at that blue veins, Mike. That's because I'm alabaster. I'm almost see-through. <laughs> can see your capillaries. He can All I've managed to do is to mat down my werewolf arm hair <laughs> on the back of my hand. What, does it feel smooth? Um, and soft and silky? No, it feels like jizz on the back of my hand. You know, when it goes, yeah. Oh, okay. Right, that's beauty secrets, because that's science, that is. That science, that is. So, so you 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 tear off the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And you you break it, it around. Test that's, on you. Huh? Yeah. I spurt it on you. Yeah, but then you turn, and then gently, gently, he's dead. Oh. You were just being too rough. Look, just look, he's just all mangled, mangled lumps. That of... tells us more about your sausage fingers than than the actual that science that is. Oh, okay. But I, I didn't hate that one, Mike. That's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv and of course on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing The Could. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's kind of like a thick. Is that it thickens, yeah, I know. Ah. Yeah. It's like old semen.